In today's video, we're gonna be talking about Ritalin or methylphenidate for the treatment of ADHD, so stay tuned. So let's start with number one. What is Ritalin or methylphenidate? Well, Ritalin is actually composed of both the D-methylphenidate and L-methylphenidate enantiomers. And the D-methylphenidate is actually known to be more pharmacologically active. And so what this medication does is that it potently inhibits both norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibition. And what that means is it inhibits the reuptake and release of both dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain, leaving more dopamine and norepinephrine available in the synapses for our brains to use. Now this action creates a stimulating effect. And so methylphenidate or Ritalin is categorized as a central nervous system stimulant. So when you increase dopamine and norepinephrine in the dorsal lateral prefrontal cortex, this may actually improve attention, concentration, executive function, and wakefulness. When you increase those neurotransmitters in the basal ganglia, this can actually help with the hyperactivity symptoms of ADHD. And so when you increase these neurotransmitters in the medial prefrontal cortex and hypothalamus, this may actually improve depression, fatigue, and sleepiness. And so that brings us to number two, what is Ritalin or methylphenidate used for? Well, Ritalin was approved in the United States in 1955, so it's been around for quite some time. And it's been approved for attention deficit hyperactivity disorder in children ages six and older, as well as adults. And it's also approved for narcolepsy in adults as an adjunct treatment. And off-label use of Ritalin or methylphenidate is also treatment-resistant depression. And so how long does it take for Ritalin to work? Well, Ritalin comes in immediate release formulations, sustained release formulations, and long-acting formulations. And typically, Ritalin will start to work within the first 30 to 60 minutes of taking your first dose. Now, it's good to note that if you do take it with food, this may actually delay your peak onset of action about two to three hours. So keep that in mind, so it's probably best that you take it on an empty stomach with water. It's also good to note that the immediate release formulation will last from two to four hours, the sustained release formulation will last four to six hours, and the long-acting formulation will last up to eight hours. Also, it's important to keep in mind that you'll continue to see benefits of taking Ritalin within two to four weeks, and you actually will start to maintain and obtain those maximum benefits within that time frame. So though you may notice after the first dose some simulating effects, and helping your ADHD symptoms, the max benefit is actually realized within two to four weeks. So hang in there if you just took your first dose and you're not seeing robust benefits just yet. So is Ritalin or methylphenidate addicting? Well, yes, actually it can be addicting and can lead to dependence and drug abuse. And it actually has a high potential for drug abuse and is categorized as a controlled substance. And it also comes with the FDA label and black box warning, notifying the patient that it does come with this risk for potential drug abuse. And so therefore it can lead to dependence, tolerance, and withdrawal. And these withdrawal symptoms can look like sleep disturbance, agitation, restlessness, and even severe depression. So it's important that if you're gonna come off the medication, you come off slowly but also to help avoid that tolerance and dependence that can develop when taking Ritalin, especially long-term, it's important to note that you can take drug holidays, so maybe take a break on the weekends or on days where you're not studying or needing it for school or work. And so what are those side effects of Ritalin or methylphenidate? Well, the common side effects are the following. Tachycardia, palpitations, headache, insomnia, anxiety, hyperhidrosis, which is excessive sweating, weight loss, decreased appetite, dry mouth, nausea, and abdominal pain. Now, other notable side effects have been exacerbation of tics, dizziness, anorexia, and blurred vision. And what about those warnings and precautions of Ritalin? Well, because it can increase your blood pressure, it's definitely important to monitor your blood pressure, especially if you're at risk 
for hypertension or high blood pressure or increase heart rate. So make sure that you're monitoring that daily as you're taking Ritalin or methylphenidate. And along that same note, it can also lead to severe cardiovascular events and sudden death has been reported with Ritalin. And this is particularly seen in both pediatric and adult populations who have cardiac structural abnormalities, arrhythmias, or severe cardiac disease. So in those patients, stimulants may not be tolerated or can even be contraindicated. So it's always important that before you start a stimulant that you get a cardiac workup and get an EKG and get approval from your provider that it's okay to go ahead and start a stimulant medication. It's also important to note that taking Ritalin or methylphenidate in pregnancy can actually lead to decreased placental blood circulation and blood flow, and therefore this constriction in placental blood flow can actually lead to premature birth as well as low birth weight. Another precaution and warning is that of psychiatric adverse events such as psychosis and mania, delusions, etc. And this can happen without the disease being present. However, there is a higher risk of this happening in patients with bipolar, especially bipolar type one, as well as those with schizophrenia. And therefore providers need to monitor their patients very closely for these disorders before starting your patient on a stimulant, as well as continuing to monitor for those symptoms for any signs of this disease if maybe it was hidden in the symptoms of ADHD. It's also important to note that just because you have bipolar or schizophrenia doesn't mean you can't receive treatment for ADHD. It just means that you have to be very cautious about what treatments that you use for ADHD and oftentimes the non-stimulant options are gonna be safer for you. Another precaution or warning that you should know about when it comes to Ritalin is something called priapism and this is in males. And this is actually a very painful and prolonged penile erection and this is an emergency and so if you have this and you're on Ritalin you definitely need to go to the emergency room to get treatment right away and also those with peripheral vasculopathy or Raynaud's phenomenon may not be able to tolerate Ritalin or stimulants in general because oftentimes they'll get increased vasoconstriction and decreased blood flow to their extremities which can be very painful it's also important to note that if you're taking Ritalin and you're a child that you should definitely be monitoring your growth because it can stunt or suppress your growth, especially with long-term use. Now, Ritalin or methylphenidate can also lower the seizure threshold, so this may not be a good medication for those with a seizure history. It's also important to monitor your um, intraocular pressure and get regular eye exams if you're taking Ritalin because incidences of acute angle closure glycoma can occur, and definitely if you're higher risk for this, that you may have to weigh out the risk versus benefits of taking Ritalin. It's also important to note that Ritalin or methylphenidate can exacerbate motor tics and Tourette syndrome so it's important to monitor your patient for that as well as get a good patient history to see if perhaps like you have this in your family history and may be more at risk for developing motor tics or even Tourette syndrome. And so now let's get into those drug interactions with Ritalin or methylphenidate. So Ritalin or methylphenidate is primarily metabolized by carboxyl esterase. So it's not metabolized by those common CYP450 liver enzymes. So it doesn't have that many drug interactions. However, methylphenidate can inhibit the plasma concentrations or inhibit the metabolism of some medications, such as warfarin, phenytoin, tricyclic antidepressants, and even some SSRIs. So when it does that, it increases the plasma concentrations of those medications, making you more prone to the side effects of those medications so it's always important to do your drug interaction checks. You also want to avoid the use of the MAOI inhibitors because using this along with stimulants can lead to hypertensive crisis and isn't safe. So it is contraindicated. So if you're taking an MAOI and considering switching to an ADHD medication or a stimulant like Ritalin, you're going to need to make sure that you're off that MAOI inhibitor for at least 14 days. Also, you wanna be careful with antihypertensive drugs. 
because using Ritalin with antihypertensive drugs may actually decrease the way that those medications work for treating your blood pressure. So this will have to be discussed again with your provider. And if you're taking a blood pressure medication with Ritalin, you're gonna to have to really be monitoring your blood pressure and making sure that that medication is still effective and working well for you. It's also important to note that halogenated anesthetics can actually cause a severe reaction when combined with Ritalin, where you can have a sudden increased risk of elevated blood pressure and heart rate during surgery. So make sure you're letting your doctors and surgeons know all the medications you're taking, including Ritalin. Another potential drug interaction that's important to note here is that with Ritalin and Risperidone, which is an antipsychotic. So it has been noted that when you're on this combination of medication, that if you're changing dosages of either the Risperidone or the Methylphenidate, you could put yourself at risk for those extra pyramidal symptoms, which are common with the antipsychotics. So therefore it's important to be monitored very closely for those symptoms and making sure that this combination of medications is not affecting you in that way. And even perhaps looking at alternative treatments instead of risperidone. Also, since Ritalin or methylphenidate decreases the seizure threshold, any other medications that can potentially decrease the seizure threshold should be taken with caution and the person should be monitored for potential risk of seizures. Also remember that central nervous system depressants like alcohol can actually decrease the effect of Ritalin because you're doing the opposite of a stimulant. And then last but not least with this, um, taken with food, as I mentioned earlier, can delay the peak onset of action for two to three hours. So just keep that in mind. So make sure to take it on an empty stomach if you want the medication to start working right away. And so now my final thoughts on Ritalin for the treatment of ADHD. While stimulants in general are considered the first line treatments for ADHD, However, it's always important to weigh the risk versus the benefits. And we just went through a lot of risk when we went over side effects and those warnings and precautions. So keep that in mind if you're considering taking Ritalin or any other stimulant for your ADHD. Also, it's important to keep in mind that building skills can actually be valuable for you and doing that with a therapist or a behavior therapist to help develop skills to manage your ADHD can also be very effective. And that's why I always talk about using skills before pills. So there you have it. That is my overview on Ritalin or methylphenidate for ADHD. Do you have experience taking this? If so, drop your experience down in the comment section below because we learn from sharing each other's stories. And as always, I thank you for watching. I wish you well on your mental health care journey, and I'll look forward to seeing you all next week.